Hello and welcome to my deck profile of my Great Nature Chat Noir Tester Fox deck. So first of all, I want to give a shout out to Kipran, a friend of mine who actually, well, gave me his list for his Great Nature deck because I wasn't sure how to build it. And I've been loving it so far. <clears throat> and it's definitely my favorite build of it. There are some choices in the deck that some people might not comprehend immediately or might question. So I'll go over everything. And honestly, this is a pretty good deck with the new Fighters Collection Winter support. So, I'll leave the strides for later and I'll actually start off with the starter because that might be one of the first weird choices that people notice. And that is Telescope Rabbit. So, Telescope Rabbit skill is kind of must one and you can rest it. And then you choose one of your other Great Nature units and give it plus 4k and then it's retired at the end of your turn. <coughs> Now, why would I play something that eats up my counter blast in a deck that already needs a lot of counter blast? Well, there are some. There's one new grade one that really needs other cards to be retired, and I'll go into it right now. And this is a really important card for this deck, and that is Honorary Assistant Mike Saburo. So Mike's skill is when he's called, you can give another unit the skill that when it's put into the drop zone, you can search your deck for a grade three, reveal it to your opponent, and put it into your hand. So it's almost the same as Duckbill, ex except instead of drawing a card, you search for a grade three. But in order to make this effective in the early game, you really need to have something else that retires another card in order to use a skill. That's why I use Telescope Rabbit, because then you will definitely have something to retire for Mike's skill to search for the grade three, because sometimes you won't have the grade two, for example, that will retire your units in order to use Mike's skill. So that's why I prefer to use the Telescope Rabbit in order to ensure that I will get to use Mika's skill in the early game in order to search for one of the great threes that you'll see in the deck. So, the other good one that we obviously max is Coiling Duck Bill. So, his skill is similar to Mika's. When he's called during main phase, you can give another great nature rearguard the skill that when it's put during the end phase, when it's put into the drop zone, you can draw a card. So, this is a really important card. When you're break riding or striding, you can give one of your units that you know is going to be retired uh, the coiling duck bill skill, so that when it's retired, it's not you're actually making advantage from it because you'll already be making advantage anyway. So yeah, and don't forget that you can call like three of them and give one unit the all, all three skills. So when that one unit is retired, you'll be drawing three cards basically. So coiling duck bill is a staple in Great Nature decks, so it's important to have it maxed out. I play two of the stride fodders because you do want to stride in the early game. You'll usually get your stride fodders through Mike, but if you don't, then you know the stride fodder does. Uh, the grade one stride helper does help out in making sure that you will stride in the early game and also late game as well. It's after your break ride legion turn, you will want to stride more often. So, and then we play four PGGs. Um, you don't really have any rear guards to protect because they're all going to be dying. Uh, so instead, you might as well be in flipping because this does this deck does eat up quite a bit of counter blast. So yeah, moving on to the great twos, we have one of the more important ones, which is Binoculus Tiger. When he attacks on Vanguard or Rearguard, you can choose one of your other great nature rearguards and give it plus 4k, and then it's retired at the end of turn. Now, this is a really important card because you can write it on turn two, and then you won't have to use the Telescope Rabbit because you can let's say. You can ride the Binoculus Tiger, and then let's say you have one of these as your rear guard, and then you can have you can call a Mike and give the Mini Belly the skill to to search the Great Three, and then when you attack with your uh, Tiger at the end of the turn, you can give the skill to Mini Belly, and then at the end of turn, Mini Belly is retired, and you search for a Great Three through Mike skill. So this makes it so that you don't need to actually use the. <coughs> You don't actually need to use the rabbit, but there will be instances where you don't ride into the binoculus tiger, so then you will need to use the rabbit. So you're just here as a backup for when you don't get the binoculus tiger in early game. So we obviously play four of the binoculus tiger. The next four of is crayon tiger. So he's the the amber clone for great nature and a very good one at that. When he attacks, you can counter one when he's boosted and you have GB one. And you can choose one of your other rear guards and stand it, and it gets plus 4k. And then at the end of turn, you draw a card and retire the unit that you stood with this effect. So this is really good on break right turns because 
you can simply just uh, use this effect to stand your rear guards and then to draw even more from extra attacks. It's good with uh, one of the strides that allows you to draw from attacks. And yeah, it's generally a really, really good Amber Clone. I obviously max it because it is very, very good. And the final grade two, because we do run the Legion, we max Researcher Fox. So his skill is, during end phase, when he's retired, you can, in your Vanguard is in Legion, you can count him as one. If you do, you search your deck for one card that's, that has the same card name as a unit on your Vanguard circle, so either him or the Legion. And then you shall put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. So he's good at searching out himself, basically, because you do want to keep reusing his skill so you, you know, don't lose advantage from uh, retiring him and you just keep reusing him all the time. Now, getting into the grade threes, obviously the first and most important one is Honorary Professor Chat Noir. So Chat Noir, when he's break ridden over, he gives the Vanguard plus 10k as always. Then, when your Great Nature Rearguard attacks the Vanguard, you can choose one of your Great Nature Rearguards and give it plus 4k until end of turn, and then at end of turn you draw a card and retire that unit. So obviously for every time one of your rearguards attacks a vanguard you can give another, any any great nature unit on your field the plus 4k buff and then uh, you'll be drawing a card for when at the end of turn and retiring it. So it's really good because you'll be drawing a lot in, in the end phase after your break ride and it's just such a good break ride. Like it's it's super amazing. It doesn't cost any canvas for all the a little buff so you get so it's very good it doesn't cost canvas for break riding so it's a very good break ride i play three because it is searchable with Mickey. and the rest of my grade three lineup some people might not like but i'll get into it and explain it as good as i can so i only play two trainer i only play two tester fox so tester fox legion legions with researcher fox and his f i'll go over his second skill first when he attacks a vanguard, you can give one of your rearguards the plus 4k buff and then retire it, so you don't draw. But then the first skill is, during your end phase, when one of your rearguards is put into the drop zone and this unit is in legion, you can unflip a damage, so every time something is retired, you unflip a damage. And then, if the one retired is, is a card that's uh, on your vanguard circles, either him or his legion mate, then you can choose two cards, you can draw a card and choose two cards from your drop zone and put them on the bottom of your deck in any order. So this is very good because it also works with Stride in a very interesting way that I'll get, get into in just a bit, but first I'll finish going over the main deck. Finally, I have two Taskmaster. Now you might be going, why don't I max him or play him three times and then not just play less Taskmaster? But let me just go over Taskmaster first. He's similar to Crayon Tiger, except he doesn't have to be boosted. Basically when he attacks on Vanguard or Rearguard once per turn, he's a, he has a GB1 skill. So you can Kamas 1 and then stand one of your rear guys and give it plus 4k and then retire it. So it doesn't give the draw like Ram Tiger does, but he does give the stand and retire. So he is pretty good just for that standing skill. So he'll work well on break right turns, on some strike turns, and his 11k base is good. Again, great threes are searchable in this deck, so that's why I like to just keep in a tech like this, just because he's searchable and he can come in handy. And so far I have not had any problems with getting the break right early and then going into the tester fox i mean sure if both of them go to damage then all i'm left with is break riding over break riding because this is not the best right target so now that we have most of the main deck let me just go over the triggers which are fairly simple we're running the good the good stuff we're running the 12 crit so it's just 12 crit doesn't matter what kind you play just 12 crit um I don't play draws because you're gonna deck out like hell. I don't play stands because it, I feel that it's redundant in Great Nature. Like sure, your whole all your columns are swinging for huge numbers, but it's better to just stand with like either Tuskmaster or Crayon Tiger rather than depend on stand triggers and then just keep the pressure of the crits coming and then they won't be able to put up with all of them with all the multiple attacks you'll be doing on your break right turn. And then obviously we play four heals and that pretty much sums it up for the trigger lineup. Now I'll just quickly go over the strides. First off, I play the new fire section Winter uh, Stride Omniscience Dragon Kathbaluk. So his skill requires a Honorary Professor Heart, and basically when you stride him, he has the similar skill as uh, Shan Noir, except he requires a Cannon Blast every time you, your rearguard attacks. So when your rearguard attacks, you can Cannon Blast 1 if you have a Honorary Professor Heart, and then you give <clears throat> And then you choose one of your rear guards and give it plus 4k until end of turn. And then at the end of the turn, you draw a card and retire the unit that you give the plus 4k to. So I play two of him. 
basically when you're sitting on rear, on your break right on on Chat Noir, you want to just stride into him and abuse his skill for early game advantage. Sure, you're gonna run out of Candle Blast pretty hard if you abuse him too much, but that's what you have the Legion for because he'll be unflipping for you. And we also run the Perfect Guard G's to unflip as well. Now, I only run two Mana Garmer, and I'll explain why. First off, Mana Garmer skill. It's a once per turn, countless one and persona. And then if the number of G units you have is a uh, face up is two or more, you choose two of your rear guards and give them plus 4k and the glory maelstrom skill when they attack for 20k or more. So this will apply with stuff like Crayon Tiger, where if you stand a rear guard and then it's hitting for over 20k, it'll keep having the glory skill. So as long as the rear guards that you chose keep hitting for over 20k, then they'll have the glory skill. So I only play two. Because this is honestly a finisher for me, and I don't see. Thing is, you're already using up a lot of counter blast, and I don't see myself striding into it twice ever. Because one, I usually don't have enough counter blast to keep using him, and two, he doesn't actually grant much advantage. He just grants pressure, and I prefer to have advantage throughout the game and then stride into finisher when I actually don't need that advantage anymore. But instead, I, the rest of my strides are there to build up advantage. So I play the one Wisdom Teller Dragon. This is a pressure stride. So when it attacks and it hits, you the when it uh, when its attack hits a vanguard, you can give one of your units plus 4k, and then the skill that when it attacks, when that unit attacks a vanguard and its power is 20k or more, you draw a card. So it's hit pressure, and it also gives you advantage if it does hit. So obviously your opponent does not want to be letting this through. And yeah, finally I play three Phoenixiax. So Phoenixiax is basically the Legion, but on just dope drugs, you know. So when it attacks a vanguard, you can choose two of your units and give them plus 4k each, and then at the end of turn, they're retired. So the legion gives one unit plus 4k, and then retires it, this gives two of them and retires both of them. Now, I'll quickly go over a little interaction between the legion and the strides. Okay, so let's say you're, let's say you've attacked, you've done all your stuff that turn, and then you're, you have to retire, let's say, these two units because of Phoenixiax's skill. So. So we have to retire from Phoenixiax's skill, so he's gonna go back to the G-Zone, because it's end of turn, so the G unit goes back to the G-Zone, and now the two units are retired, right? Now, because it's also the end of turn, the Tester Fox's skill is gonna come into play, and he will allow us to unflip the two damage, because it's also an end of turn, and two units were retired. So, this is a really important uh, interaction between Stride and Tester Fox, so don't forget that when, let's say, you go, your stride goes back and your units are being retired, you can still use Tester Fox's skill to retire to get the unflipping bonus or any other bonus from retiring, so keep that in mind. So a little bit of an example situation, let's say we're sitting on Chat Noir, we have 3 damage and let's say this is our hand, right? So we're gonna pay the cost for stride and then stride into Kaspaluk. So now we can call out our field and let's say, I don't know, let's call out the Crayon Tiger, a Researcher Fox, like this is just for an example, don't take this too seriously, but then we choose both Duck Bills and give them to the Researcher Fox, since he will be getting retired. So let's say we attack with Kathbaluk first, because if we get any criticals, we can apply them to our rear guards, and then with Crayon Tiger, we can probably maximize from that. So first check, we get a crit, we can give that to Researcher Fox, then we get another Researcher Fox, and then a Shot Noir. So it's alright, already got three cards just from the all, from the stride, obviously. Then, we can attack with Researcher Fox. You can attack with him alone, you can boost him. If he's attacking alone, he'll be attacking for 14 in this case. So you can bump it up to 21. And then, you can use Kathbaluk's skill to counterblast 1, and then give the plus 4k power to Crayon Tiger, or Duckbill, whichever you want. But you can give it to Crayon Tiger for now. And then when Crayon Tiger is retired, we'll be drawing a card. So that's already one. Now, so you be done with that attack, then you boost the Crayon Tiger and use its skill to stand for another counter blast. You can stand the Researcher Fox, and then you can use Kathbaluk skill to counter blast another time and give the another plus 4k here in order to draw another card from Kathbaluk skill. So this will be hitting for just a 20k because it has the plus 4k from Researcher Fox, but you're beginning an another attack, another card in hand. And then with Researcher Fox, we got 14 from the crit, we got 2 times plus 8k from Crayon Tiger and Kathbaluk. So now we'll be hitting for a total of 22k just with the Crayon, uh, with the Researcher Fox alone. 
And then, I mean, if you had another open Counterblast, you could maybe use his the Catholic skill again just, just to draw another card, but you might be running a bit too low on Counterblast for your next turn, so I might advise to stay off from that. So, end of turn will be, obviously, the stride goes back to the G-Zone, and now these two cards will be retired. And now, from the two Duck Bills that we used, we'll be drawing two cards, and then from Shad Noirs, I mean, from Kafpalugs, uh, two usages of its skill will be drawing two cards, and then from Crayon Tigers, one usage will be drawing another card. So we got five cards, just like that, from using the different skills. And yeah, so I mean, if you didn't use the Duck Bills, you'll only be, only be drawing three, but you're basically trading one Counter Blast for each card. But with Duck Bill, you've traded three Counter Blasts for a total of plus five cards in hand. And then with the, obviously, with the Stride, you've actually gotten eight. So, you know, it does make, make some sort of a difference. And then next turn, you can obviously go from Break Ride into your Legion and then do a lot of shenanigans with the Shot Noir. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the the Honorary Professor, I guess, deck profile. It, it's, a, it's a very fun deck and it's honestly really good. I could see it as a rogue deck right now because it is very strong. Just the problem of the Counter consumption with him can be, it can be a bit of a trouble. But otherwise, the deck is very strong and makes a lot of advantage and really, really hard numbers during break right turns and also just, just in general, you can really make be, like just huge numbers even through Phoenixiax just randomly during like the later stages of the game. But the deck does start losing a bit of its steam towards the late game, so it's it's strongest in mid mid to early late, I guess you could say if, if I can even use those terms, but the deck is very strong. Uh, obviously, it's very good that now you can search for grade 3s through Mickey. So I only play 7 grade 3s just because they're searchable and we do play these, the new starter in order to help us make sure that we always search the grade 3. So, that's pretty, pretty much it for me today and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.